Hi, I'm Steve Harper, and I am very honored to have Superintendent Wade Calloway from Groover ISD in Groover, Texas, join us today for Leadership is a Contact Sport. I can tell you, having done this interview, Superintendent Calloway is a salt of the earth individual. He drops so many amazing leadership lessons. He's humble, he's kind, and no matter what size district you might work for, you're going to be inspired. And I can't wait for you to meet him. So let's dive right in. Superintendent Calloway, thank you so much for joining us for this series. As we talked about previously, you know, um, leadership is a contact sport. It is something that we are super excited to highlight a lot of school district leaders, especially the smaller school districts that are really putting in the work and doing so much with, with limited time and resources. And so I'm so grateful that you carved out a few minutes for us today. So how are you doing? I'm doing well. And uh, Steve, I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. I'm, I'm excited for this. Um, I kind of mentioned in your introduction that uh, I know that everybody that's going to watch this is, is really in for a treat because I really enjoyed interacting with you so far. The um, really is a good way to start, I think, today would be give us a little sense of your career path and what led you to be um, superintendent and tell us a little bit about your school district. Well, uh, Steve, that's, you know, I was one of those guys, uh, former coach, I was never going to be an administrator. You know, it was the dark side and, and all this. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty wild that, that I'm actually in this seat, but uh, uh -huh. certainly blessed to be here. I was, uh, you know, I was uh, fortunate to, to be able to walk on at uh, West Texas A&M as a really bad basketball player and uh, took the, the college coaching. I was, you know, going to be the next Krzyzewski. Uh, I love it. And that didn't quite turn out. Uh, but I uh, got to coach uh, for a few years and then uh, got married and uh, went went high school, went to the high school route, went to a very small, uh, basically six-man school, uh, Turkey, Kittaquay, uh, Turkey, Texas, the home of Bob Wills. Yeah. Uh, anyway, and then oh, bounced around to Clarendon, uh, Amarillo Caprock, and then uh, took a pretty good pay cut to come to Groover as the head boys basketball coach, because it's kind of like Mayberry, because that's what it I, it seemed to be. Yeah. And we had four children, and uh, and it's turned out to be that way. Uh, we've been really blessed uh, to move here, and, you know, it's uh, small town, conservative values, all those things that we were looking for yeah. in raising our kids. Uh, and our last one is now a senior in high school, so we've got three that's of them right. out. And... Uh, while I was here, I, I was a basketball coach for a number of years, and then they came to me and said, uh, "Hey, how about junior high principal?" And I went, uh, "Yeah, it'll get me out." You know, and I loved I actually love teaching science. I'm a science guy, biology guy, uh, but I said, "Yeah, I'll do it if I can continue to coach basketball." And so they said, "Okay, we'll do that." And I uh, didn't have my certification any of that stuff, but uh, so I spent that year getting my certification, and and. And then a couple of years later, same thing, uh, superintendent left and they said, hey, you want to be superintendent? And I said, I don't have my stuff in my certification, but sure, why not? You know, I'll kind of jump in both feet and here we go. So I've really never been qualified uh, to, to, for any of my roles here, probably, but uh, they've they've been uh, good to me and uh, I'm right. blessed about that. And, and our district is phenomenal, you know, uh, in spite of the unqualified superintendent, uh, we should get word uh, any day now that uh, it's it's official that our high school will, will get uh, a national blue ribbon for That's exemplary fantastic. high achieving, and it'll be our third in three years. Uh, our elementary and junior high both received one in 2022, and now our high school. So uh, we think it's the first time in the state, uh, the state's history, that a district that has at least three campuses, every single campus has received this national blue ribbon. Uh, and for sure, within a three-year uh, time span, I don't think it's ever been done. So that's awesome. Uh, well, well, congratulations, awesome people. Yeah, it's uh, you know, surround yourself with great people and support them, turn them loose, and that's what we do. <laughs> well, that was going to be my next question. Describe your leadership style, but I, I think you may have just encapsulated that right there. <laughs> But what, what would you consider your leadership style? I, obviously, um, it, being a basketball coach, uh, that's probably informed some of how you've taken that into this role. But, you know, share a little bit of your philosophy there. Well, I, I was a pretty old school uh, 
basketball coach. I, I, you know, again, was blessed to work under some great Mark Adams, who was Big 12 coach of the year at Tech. Uh, yeah. was walked on for him. He he made one really bad decision. That was to keep me around, but I appreciate it. Uh, Rick <laughs> Cooper, Jeff Morgan. I mean, some great leadership. Uh, so, I, you know, obviously I learned a lot from them uh, and owe them a lot. But uh, I would say – servant is is really I'm, I'm here to support our people uh you know and and that comes in different ways but if i need to you know watch a classroom or or whatever i need to do there's no there's no job too small for for me to do here you know That's uh, plumbing mow grass i don't it doesn't matter that yep. my job is to support the teachers because the teachers are the boots on the ground for the kids and the kids are the reason that we're in this profession. And I think there's no greater impact I can have on students than to support our people. And uh, that's what I try to do to the best of my ability. I love that. That's fantastic. And that's, that's a great philosophy to have. I think a lot of uh, superintendents and school leaders will benefit from hearing that from you. You mentioned Mike Krzyzewski, right, for Duke. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, you know, he was the Duke uh, basketball coach. Lots of success, national championships. But one of the things that um, always struck me about him and his approach was his leadership style in organizing those teams. Have you been inspired since you mentioned his name that kind of like maybe that was the high watermark for you? Have you have you been inspired by anything he or any other coaches along the way that influenced you as a player um, lessons that they shared with you that you actually put into practice today? Well, I think so. I think they're probably innumerable, you know, like I said, played for some tremendous coaches and, uh, you know, another coach, the basketball people know his name's Don Meyer. He, he had a, some coaching clinics and, and I was fortunate to go to some of them and, and he, uh, he, he was pretty instrumental in, in, and some of my philosophies as well, just, you know, it's the little things that matter and uh, attention to detail, uh, those type of things, uh, you know, try to outwork everybody, you know, do things right. Just simple, simple things that we've heard uh, over and over, but uh, uh, they're cliche for a reason, you know, because there's so much truth uh, packed in them. And uh, uh, again, you, you know, you don't take yourself too seriously. Yeah. work really hard and and be good to people uh and, and know where your absolutes are you know we do have to have absolutes in this profession and, and you have to draw lines and and uh unfortunately sometimes you know uh you have to make decisions that other people don't like uh, yeah. one of the things that uh you know when we're filling out the blue national blue ribbon they ask kind of what what's your special sauce what's your secret ingredient and time and time again, we poll the teachers and, you know, everything. And it really comes down to two things uh, in a nutshell. It's it's uh, high expectations and accountability, yeah. those two things. And you really can't have one without the other. Uh, but but those are two things that I think separate us as a, as a district because we do have really high expectations. Uh, and, and we expect those to be met. And, and, of course, we support and all those things. But, uh, you know, when – we, we try to pull kids up and teachers up and, you know, and, and it's really a community mindset, uh, yeah, such a yeah. giving community. Uh, we have a farm scholarship program. I'd love to talk about if, if we have time, but absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, a unique place. And again, high expectations and uh, accountability are, are, are uh, paramount for us. Well, you mentioned the farm scholarship and, and I saw a little bit of coverage about that, about how it got started and the momentum that it's taken. So share a little bit about that, if you don't mind. Uh, that's great. We've been able to, to go. We, we, we've spoken in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, we're going to Houston later uh, to, to, to share about it. But it was started when I first got here about 15 years ago. Uh, and even before that, there was a, a bachelor farmer uh, who, who donated a section of land. And so the schools had it since the 70s and they, they you know, they would lease cattle. They would, you know, do things, but they didn't know what to do exactly with it. Right. Uh, and then somebody, they said, why don't we grow some corn? Because we have really good irrigation up here. And, you know, it's a very agrarian, you know, agriculturally uh, based community. So uh, lo and behold, we have volunteers. The school owns no machinery, no equipment. 
uh, we own the land and the well. And uh, so they plant the corn, they, they harvest the corn, they, they store it, they, they sell it. And we make about four to 500,000 a year wow. off of that. And it goes into a, uh, it's a 501 uh, C3, you know, nonprofit. Yep. And uh, we're, we're able to uh, help every student that, that graduates from Groover go to a post-secondary school of their choice, whether it's, you know, Harvard, Yale, or, or Wyo Tech, you know, a diesel mechanic, which we've had. Yep. You know, so, uh, and, and the, the, the students earn points, uh, really two things, participation and excellence. So the more things they're involved in, you know, so we want them to be in band and ag and athletics and fine arts. And of course, grades matter, attendance matters, all those things matter. Uh, and then the better they do individually or team, uh, they get more points. So, you know, if the, the cross country team goes to state, then that group gets more points as they advance and, you know, UIL academics and band and all those things. So it's really neat. Uh, we, we help pay for uh, eight semesters uh, wow. of college and it's last money in, you know, they have to fill out the FAFSA. They have to do some things, maintain a 2.5 uh, GPA full-time student. But uh, we've had, I think 23, first generation graduates. Uh, and, and it's, it's been, it's been going about six years now. So, uh, you know, it's, and we're a small, you know, we have 150 kids in high school. So, you know, when we get uh, 23 first generation graduates, it, it, it's That's significant, you, you know, and, yeah. it, and it impacts them, but it, it impacts generations. Sure. You know, now, not only do they get impacted, but their children, their children's children, I mean, it's, uh, it really is generational. Uh, and, uh, it's just, it's just great to be a part of, uh, and it, and it speaks to the, again, it's all volunteer work and it speaks to our community. Uh, pretty cool. Pretty it cool. is really cool. I mean, um, yeah, you and I talked a little bit. I, I wrote this book called the ripple effect. I, I'm a sort of, uh, uh, what I call a serial entrepreneur. I have my hands in a number of things, but one of my passions is obviously teaching people about the you know, the consequences of our actions, right? Everything that we do has a ripple effect, but just like this, you know, when you think about first generation, you know, uh, kids that are going to college and what that'll have an impact 20, 30, 40 years down the road, just because you guys have been able to create that ripple. I'm, I'm just blown away and my hat's off to you. I think there's a lot of districts that will be inspired by what you guys have done. Well, I hope so. And if anybody has got, you know, not everybody has a, a section of land, but I think everybody has something, Yeah. you know, I mean, and I don't know what that is, but, but, uh, you know, we, we've talked to, we, I was visiting with a gentleman from Kansas, you know, we're actually closer to liberal Kansas than Amarillo, Texas. That's how far North in the panhandle we are. Uh, and how big Texas is, right? Just by huge, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we love to help, you know, pay it forward, those type of things. Uh, again, that. we're here to, we're here to serve and help and, try to make this world a little better. Well, I mean, you, you start out by saying you were unqualified, but you seem like the most qualified person ever. And they're very lucky to have you for sure. What, what, what's, what's one piece of advice you wish you had been given when you took the role as superintendent that you, you know, would have, would have, um, you know, maybe made some, you know, difference, you know, to, to how you got started and how you got rolling as the superintendent. I don't know. One thing that, one thing that I, I have learned and, and, I can't remember who told me, but a year or two into it, uh, and it's really with, uh, regarding personnel, is no help is better than bad help. Uh, you know, there's a teacher shortage and, you know, we're yeah. scrambling, but just to plug in anybody, even though there's red flags, just to say that we've got it filled yeah, uh, is a mistake. So, yeah. you know, that's that goes to the – the servant, you know, last year I was an assistant ba junior high basketball coach. We were short a coach, uh, but our uh, short a couple of coaches actually. Our girls coordinator took over the head softball job. You know, he went straight from basketball to softball. That's a tough yeah. back to back. Yeah, uh, I was helping out with junior high basketball. I'm the head tennis coach. You know, there's just, uh, you know, sometimes you just jump in and 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 you you make it work. Uh, and it's not ideal, but it's better than putting somebody that is not a good fit. Yeah, absolutely. So, 
Oh, that's I, I so so agree with that. I and mean, you and I will have to talk offline sometime about tennis because I I started in high school as a tennis coach and it's oh, one great. of my passions. I love I love it. Um, I was involved in a program called National Junior Tennis yeah. Association, which gave kids underprivileged kids the opportunity to actually play the sport. Um, you know, with that's everything awesome. funded and uh, I. So many of uh, lessons that I learned through that has informed what I do as an entrepreneur. So we'll have plenty to talk about after that. But yeah. I want to I want to mention the sign that you have before you uh, or behind you. Uh, the harder you work, the harder it is to surrender. Where where'd that come from, and how does that inform what you do day to day? Well, my my high school basketball coach uh, Gary Miller, he was cleaning out his office, and he gave me a couple of signs. And actually, I, this is an unusual place for me to do this. First time I've ever zoomed from this uh because i couldn't get good wi-fi in the boardroom so oh, gotcha. okay. it's kind of a yeah it's just kind of happenstance but yeah. Uh, yeah i think i think again it's a it's a good reminder uh, that you know you can't take things for granted you, you can't uh rest on your laurels uh and, and you just try to outwork people you know yeah. and out serve people and out love you know and you have bad days obviously and there's times when you don't feel like doing things but but you get up and, you know, you keep trucking, you get knocked down, you get up and, you know, it's just, it's just part of life. And again, uh, athletics is, is a great, you know, it's, it's not life, but it, it teaches a lot of great life lessons Sure, as does, you know, fine arts and, and everything else. But, uh, you know, it's, um, uh, again, blessed to have, have had great people, uh, mentor me and, and opportunities to, to uh, not only succeed, but to fail and then have great support around when you do and get up and, and keep going. Keep going. I love that. How do you, how do you find yourself leading through challenging times? You know, the, especially smaller rural districts, you know, they, there's a, like you touched on already, you, you've got to, got to do what is necessary. And there are a lot of uh, plates that you personally have spinning just to keep, you know, everything going. Uh, and not to mention all the challenges with personnel and the challenges that you know, the the you guys face just as a school district in very unusual times right now. So how do, how do you lead through that in, in your? Uh, I, I, it's just it's just my person. There's a, a lot of different ways to do it, but I but I I take it on uh, head on. You know I, I don't I don't like uh, leaving things for the next day. If there's, if there's an issue that's festering, I, you know, we, we, again, we have a community with really high expectations, which is good, but it can be bad because, you know, we lose a couple of games. We, we want to fire the coach and, or this and, you know, so we've had, you know, we had a, a, a period of time uh, two years ago where we, you know, we had parents and, and grandparents that weren't going through the chain of command, you know, you, you know, the, the stories yeah. and they're, and uh, so about the third thing in a week happened and I just called a meeting, a community that said, hey, we're going to have an extracurricular parent meeting at the gym uh, tonight at six. Please be there and just addressed it. You know, uh, if you're mad, that's OK. I mean, I, I get it. You love your kids, but there's a right way and a wrong way to handle it. And, yeah. and uh, you know, confronting a coach after, you know, walking off the court, that's the, it's, no, we're not going to do that. You know, yeah. uh, and you, you're not going to call the board member. You, if you have problems, you're going to set up a meeting with the coach. Yeah. The next day, you know, not the, after the game, because everybody's emotions are, you know, just things they know, but just wanted to remind them. So just things like that. Uh, if, if I hear something and I love trying to fix things. So people kind of know, I don't, and they still call me coach Callaway. Don't tell coach Callaway right now. Cause he's going to go, you know, I'm going to go try to fix it. Yep. And so I've got to slow myself down and remind myself again that there is a chain of command because I've been guilty of that too. Sure. You know, call and I go, I want to fix it, and and I usurp you know the authority of of others, and that's not a good role model. So uh, I'm working on stuff as well, Steve. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've we've all got stuff and and you know skeletons in the closet, and and so uh, you know it's a learning experience yeah. e even now. Well, you know, I think that's what makes you a great leader, right? Self-awareness and the commitment to continue to get better and to continue to learn and lead from what you're, you're, you're educating yourself and how you're, and your experience. I think that's phenomenal. When you talk about the, the parent meeting, it, it, 
you know, one of my favorite basketball movies is Hoosiers, right? And I remember yes. when they bring him into, I think it's the local barber shop, right? And everybody's there um, before he actually officially takes the job. And, um, you know, you, 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 trying to temper the expectations of the community in addition to trying to make sure that this coach doesn't just leave or quit uh, right. based on the pressure, I think is kind of unique. So that you, you made me think of that, uh, that movie, which is one of my favorites. So. It's great. Yeah, it's a great movie. Love it. <laughs> Um, let me ask you, um, you know, how do you stay personally motivated to, you know, jump out of bed every day and, and come do the job that you do? I, I think, you know, again, we we've excelled and done a lot of great things here uh, because we've got great people. Uh, but there's pressure to continue to, you know, succeed and excel. Yep. Uh, I'm always again, going back to the coach, uh, there's the adage you. you you either need to love to win or hate to lose. And I, I never understood that really until you get in a leadership role and I hate to lose. Yeah. You know, winning is, is, you know, I'd win a game and I'm stressing about the next game, you know, <laughs> immediately. Yeah. Yep. I lose a game and I want to jump off a bill, you know, unfortunately there's not any really tall buildings here. So I would just, <laughs> break legs. Uh, but uh, you know, that's, that's, uh, and that was ingrained again with with the the, the coaches that I was with in, in college. They were yep. you did not want to lose, you know. And so uh, uh, fear of failure, and that's probably not a great uh, motivational. I mean, there's probably a psychologist would probably pick me apart with that. But but <laughs> it, it, I, I think there's truth for me I, anyway yeah. that I just I, it's not an expectation to succeed, but it's an expectation to do everything we can to succeed and make sure it's right and give ourselves the best chance to win yep. and you, you, whatever that is and winning, you know, in, in, in this, this profession is, you know, 23 first generation, you know, and really we do want to educate, but we really want to make good neighbors. That's kind yeah. of our, that's the most important thing. We do want to educate them. And, you know, uh, the, the example that, that I give is, you know, Ted Kaczynski was a brilliant mathematician, Sure, but he was a lousy neighbor. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you get a guy like uh, uh, Winston Churchill, who was a terrible, terrible student, you know, yeah. but but, you know, held uh, held the allies together in a, yeah. in a in a obviously pivotal moment in, in world history. So uh, we, we want to make more Winston Churchill's than than Ted Kaczynski's for sure. Absolutely. Uh, and, and I think that especially in this day and age, you know, goodness and kindness and, you know, the vitriol is out of control and social media had a lot to do with that. But if we can just help our students become better people and better husbands and wives and dads and students, whatever it is, uh, it's, it's going to make the world a better place again. Yeah. So, and I then mean, teach them a little math and science along the way for yeah. sure. I mean, that's a, that's a great mission and you're, you're clearly fulfilling it. And I, I love how you, you weave that back into expectations and accountability. You know what, you know, you know what the rules of the game are, what the expectations that you're setting for yourself, but ultimately how you hold yourself and others accountable for what the actual in game is, right? Let's yeah. make better people, right? Better kids. Yeah. In and, our uh, community. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. You know, our community is, is, is such a great example of that with the farm scholarship, you know, yeah. they're giving back They're They're doing, it's a servanthood. Uh, we started a, a green cord, you know, at graduation, we give them a green cord if our students get 25 hours of documented uh, community service uh, awesome. per, per year. So if they start as a freshman by their senior year, they've got over 100 hours of documented, you know, unpaid community service. Uh, so we, we we intentionally want to teach and and promote service and servanthood and, you know, humility and those type of things. That's I think phenomenal. it's important. Absolutely. I think, you know, that, you know, you, you could either go back and, you know, as someone that goes through school, you can either go back and say, that's the time I had to spend or the time I got to spend and, and sure. be lucky for it. Right. And, yeah. you, know, uh, you know, the the education piece is one aspect, but there's a whole different dynamic to trying to make, you know, these these young people into, you know, good, you know, law abiding citizens of the community. Absolutely. And, you know, we, we have such an influence. I, I know personally, um, you know, when I was in high school, I, I was headed down a path of the wrong direction, never would have ever thought I could be an entrepreneur. 
And it was a teacher that made a huge difference in my life. I mean, completely changed me. And um, the influence that we have both, you know, in the classroom and outside the classroom as part of the school community is just so significant. So my hat's off to what you and your team are doing. Uh, thank you. You know, we we said when I was coaching and we, we say it now, you know, if we just if we just teach them science, we failed. If we just teach them how to play basketball, then then we failed as a coach. Uh, I yep. feel because there's so many there's so many life lessons uh and it, it's such a developmental stage in their lives uh, and we can have a great impact positive or negative uh on them and it, it is a great responsibility uh it is i you know i tell leadership groups when i speak to them i i always frame it up like um you know especially if you look back in in your youth years right and you say What's somebody that believed in you and what's somebody who didn't show any interest in believing in you? And right. both of those are really stark memories. Yeah. And when you start unpar- you know, unpacking that, I should say a little bit as to what did the person that believed in you do? How did they make you feel? Uh, what was it that you know made them stand out? Why did they come to the top of mind when you actually thought about it? And then ultimately, how do you feel when you think about them? It's usually always very positive. It's always very like, oh, you know, it was just it's right. like magic. Right. But then on the other side, on, you know, for people that really had that negative influence on you, you know, you also have those same things. You know how they made you feel They, you know that, you know, what, you know, anxiety you had in engaging or talking to them or how you always walked away from a, a conversation or, you know, an experience engaging with them. Uh, worse off, right? And what I always tell people is now you have kind of a parameter by which you can use your guardrails. You know who and why, uh, good, how good people do what they do, but you also know the bad things. And so, right. you know, that provides the bumper rails if, you, if you're if you a bowler, you know, right? To, to yes. provide you the rails to make sure that you don't go too far on one side or the other, but hopefully more on the positive. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. I think, uh, you know, you, you, you learn from both the good and the bad, you know, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I think that's a good point. Yes. Well, I mean, I, I want to be respectful of your time. I just have a, a few uh, additional questions that I just wanted to ask you. And, and, you know, one of the things that I'd, I'd love to know is if you were provided a billboard that you could put out there that everybody would see that's coming into this profession, what would you, what would your message on the billboard be? I think it would probably, since we just talked about it, you know, we, we need, we need really, we need great people to help develop great people. You know, I think we need, it is such a need right now. Uh, again, the educational component is, is, is vital in us and that's why we're here, but, but we really need good people to, to mentor kids so they can be really good people. Uh, and again, it's that ripple effect that you yeah. talked about. I mean, that's, that's what it is. And, uh, you know, Billy Graham has a great quote, uh, a coach will impact more students in a year than most people will in a lifetime. Yeah. And, and it's, it is such a powerful, uh, important, vital profession. Uh, and it's a little bit under attack here in the state of Texas. You know, there's yeah. a little bit, uh, you know, even our legislature, you know, public school is, you know, woke and I, maybe someplace I, I, I don't yep. know but not here certainly and and uh, uh it's it's a great noble profession and uh we need good people in it i love that yeah i i was going to ask you what would you like uh folks in other communities to uh, to really understand and know some of the challenges or or issues that you guys face as a as a rural district i mean you you're not waiting for the help. You're actually making your own, you know, you know, um, you know, plan to solve a lot of these issues. And you're you're proactive and being out there doing things to, you know, engage the kids and and get them to buy in, and then ultimately having this payoff with what you've invested in terms of that land. But um, what are the, what are you know the challenges that you know maybe people aren't familiar with that you really face day to day, you know, in schools in general. Yeah, they, you know the the funding component is 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 uh, is an issue, uh, and I'm sure the again the legislate legislators uh, think that we're just whining, and but there is a, a real need to improve the teacher pay, I, mm-hmm. I believe, uh, because again they are the boots on the ground, uh, and I think that's coming. Uh, I certainly hope so. But funding is funding's an issue. 
Uh, you know, there's a, is a teacher shortage. Now we've been blessed. We've we're short really one, one teacher slash coach, but we're, we're in really good shape relative to most. And even our farm scholarship, we've, we've expanded that to a grow your own program where we've had, you know, three of our pro- paraprofessionals, you know, get their teacher cert- cert- certification. So we'll help our teachers and our aides will help, help our teachers get their master's degree and our aides get their teacher certification. So again, being proactive and, and yeah. not really waiting around for, for help uh, if we can do it. But, you know, that's, it's certainly, and, and logistically it's a challenge for us because we're, we are literally in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and it's 30, 30 plus miles to the nearest Walmart. Uh, there's, you know, we don't even have a Dairy Queen, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, some people just couldn't live here because, you know, uh, but then again, I'm not sure I could live in Houston, you know, but uh, it's logistically challenging to get people here. If, if uh, you know, they're not used to it uh, yeah. financially, we're, we're, you know, past the deficit budget, like 90% of the districts in Texas. Uh, but again, dust yourself off. Let's go. You know, we're, we're, we're going to figure it out one way or the other I love uh, it. and, and, and keep, uh, keep our, you know, mind set on what's the most important thing. And that's, you know, the kids and the teachers. So. I love that. You know, and that's part of why we're doing this series is to bring exposure to uh, folks that may not always get that story out. And, and your story is so great and so unique and, you never know. Someone who sees this may know the right person that is looking for that role or opportunity, and sure. they may contact you because of that. There, there could be a ripple from that. But sure. uh, I want to say, you know, I, I don't think you should say you're unqualified at anything. I think you're <laughs> one of the most qualified leaders I've ever had the pleasure of speaking to, and wow. I'm just honored that you agreed to do this. So thank you so much. Well, I, I appreciate that, and I, I, you know, I thank you. I think, you're crazy. I think you're crazy, but thank you. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, yeah, my wife would agree with you, but at the end of the day, it's, it's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we, we have, uh, we've had the luck of, of meeting a lot of great school leaders and you're definitely right up there. And so I'm so grateful. Yeah, so, you know, Superintendent Callaway, thank you so, so much for being a part of this. Oh, it's my pleasure. I enjoyed Joey, uh, not so much talk about me, but I love talking about our district. And absolutely, and, uh, well, we'll we'll have to revisit, and there there may be absolutely. some other opportunities to do that. Um, so we'll, we'll uh, we're going to keep the lines of communication. You know, the one thing that you unfortunately inherit when you get uh, uh, you know engaged with me is you're probably going to end up finding a friend that's here to support you any way you can. That's so, no, I yeah. can't. You can't have too many. No, absolutely not. I, so. I appreciate that. Well, thank you so much for the time today. I really appreciate it.